It will not be that kind of a ministry. Because the spirit that is upon this ministry is the ministry that says, do all that you can. And that same spirit will come into your life. That same power will touch you. That same anointing will bathe you until you begin to sing, Lord, lift me up and let me stand on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. I want to go beyond where other people sit and come into the glory of your power and your spirit. Whatever you give me, God, I want more. Whatever you let me do, God, I'm ready for more. My God, give me this mountain and let your power descend that the world can see that surely our God is able and he will deliver. The more that you grow, the more that you move forward in God, you begin to understand that when you do all that you can, what you can do becomes more. God begins to entrust more into your hands. He begins to entrust more into your spirit. He begins to entrust more into your heart. I've never felt like a big preacher. I've never felt like sometimes people come and they act like we're a celebrity. Somebody said, I never shook, shook, shook hands with a celebrity before. And I said, you still haven't. Because I'm not a celebrity. I'm a servant of the Most High God. I look not at myself as somebody to be impressed with. But I believe in this moment that God wants channels. That he can let his glory flow through in our time. He wants men who will say, don't look at me, but look at Jesus. He wants a people who will say, you haven't seen anything yet. He wants to show himself in this hour. And as long as we're willing to open up, he's a God who will manifest himself as a God strong and mighty to bless. Hallelujah. We go places and sometimes people act almost in some form of awe. It seems surprising to me. One reason is perhaps by being a pastor of a church, you become George to everybody. And that's good. That keeps you humble. And, and yet in the midst of it all, whether it was this way or another, I thank God that when you use all that you can, you realize how limited you are, but how unlimited he is. I remember when a particular station manager was leaving and he was going to be replaced and he called me into his office and he said, George, I remember when you started in this station and I've watched you come from just a, a young man with a half hour a week. And I've seen you become the most important program that we have as far as popularity. And he said, you haven't changed one bit and I commend you for it. And I thank God that when you know God, you'll never get impressed with others. You'll never get impressed with yourself. But you'll look up and you'll say, he's altogether lovely. It's not men, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's a God of might and miracles. And you can behold him and say, oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He means more than life to me. I've seen him. I've beheld him. He's a God of might and miracles. And he's not a long way off but he's in your mouth. And if you will confess you with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you'll be saved from your fears. You'll be saved from your laziness. You'll be saved from your weakness. You'll be saved from your personality. You'll be saved from your problems. You'll be saved from your troubles. You'll be saved from your sickness. You'll be saved from the power of hell. You'll be saved from the devil. You'll go forward and God will bless. My best messages are preached when I've emptied myself. My best moments are when I have nothing else to give. My greatest moment is when I've come to the place when I've done all that I could and God looks down and says, 
Move over, son, for I am the Lord thy God that reigneth, and I will not disappoint thee. Open your mouth, and I will fill it, and I shall cause my word to go forth, and it shall be with life, and it shall be with spirit, and it shall be with power. Yea, you shall speak my word, and those that hear shall live, and even your enemies will recognize that I of a truth dwell in thee. to this church service began to take the offering and it was the first that I knew I was tired I could tell it I was talking slow I was thinking slower my mouth was dry went back in the office and got a drink of water while the offering was being taken and I was aware God I need your help I didn't come to mumble through this service I didn't come to just to give you something because I want to go home I come to feed you the word of the Lord. I want you to leave and say of a truth, God was among us. Hallelujah. Let me share you a scripture before we close. Second Kings chapter 13. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, This prophet, this man of God, take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And I can see that man, that king, his heart was not concerned about getting involved. He wasn't a man who was accustomed to doing all that he could. He was accustomed to having things left over. His time, his resources, his mind, his everything. He didn't use it to the limit. And there, no doubt, with bow in his hands and these arrows, he pulled it back and smitten to the ground as though he was fighting an enemy. But he would only do it those few times instead of using every arrow. And Elisha said, listen, you're lost. Why? Because you haven't done all that you can. And I want to tell you, Christian, if you want to win, if you want to be blessed, you're not going to stop with abilities left in your hand. You're not going to stop because you just get bored. You're going to be blessed because you cry out, oh God, give me another chance. Give me another opportunity. Give me another privilege. My God, use me for your grace. I remember when it looked like God wasn't going to use me anymore. We had moved from building to building. I began to help a, a Assembly of God pastor preach there in his church on a Sunday night. He chose to move to another state. And it wouldn't have been good for me to remain. The new pastor had to have a clean slate. And so I wasn't there. The building that we had that I told you about, the first one we started with the plate glass windows and the cross on the front. Urban Renewal had tore it all down except one wall across the back. And there was a big mural that was left there. The rocking, wrecking ball had not broken that. It was the only thing that was left of the rubble. 
and I pulled up in front of the location and parked my car and looked out the side window. And there, this mural was all by itself on a wall of stone. It was a mural of Jesus surrounded by the little children. And all around about him, this beautiful picture of Jesus and the little children were around him. And I wept. And I cried in that moment, oh, God, don't give me up. Let me serve you. Don't give me up. I've got to do whatever I can. My God, don't put me on the shelf. God, don't. I know that I've missed the mark at times. I know that I haven't been wise. I know there's been times when there's been sin in my life. But my God, my God, let me serve you. All I could do that night was pray. There was nothing else I could do. There was no church to preach in. There was no congregation that was mine. The only thing I could do in that moment was pray. No other gift, no other power, no other option. The only thing I could do that night was pray. And I don't know what you can do tonight, but whatever it is, do it. If it's repent, then get right with God. If it's serve, then serve him. Whatever it is, find out what you can do now and do all that you can. God will bless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand with me in this service and praise him. Let the power of the Holy Spirit touch your life. Reach toward him tonight. Let God take a hold of your life. Let the Lord touch you right now. God's calling you. And this thing that touches you is spirit. This thing that touches you is life. This thing that's touching you is anointing.